What's up guys and uh, welcome back to another beautiful Minnesota spring day. I mean it's only 40 mile an hour winds instead of the usual 50 so perfect for working outside. And uh, today we're taking a deep dive into the dark and deep psychological grip that addiction can have on the human mind because uh, I'm an idiot. I got this crew cab. I got two more crew cabs in the yard. I got two more cabs that aren't on frames in the yard. And I bought this over the weekend. Why? Because I have a sickness deep, deep inside of me. And the only thing that can fix it is acquiring a new project every 45 minutes to an hour. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, probably the crustiest truck I ever bought. Uh, actually, no, it's not. It's the second crustiest truck I ever bought. And definitely the worst one I currently own, but it's a 4x4 crew cab. And you're not going to not buy a 4x4 crew cab that already has a big bu aftermarket bumper on it. I mean, it's literally like it was made for me. And uh, just like all of them, it was running when parked. And uh, allegedly, it popped off on starting fluid. So I brought it home and uh, should have had the hood already popped. But, we brought it here, tossed a battery in it, because I have shitloads of batteries, checked all the fluids, it's got oil, that looks good, absolutely no coolant, but it's a TBI 350, I don't really care about the health of it, so we threw a battery in it, and uh, here was the result. She at least... turns over but uh, I did that too many times on the other takes of this video so the battery's kind of low but uh, it turns over that's a good sign uh, the fuel tanks are junk so that's what we'll be doing today is uh, installing a new fuel tank and putting that door back on oh geez sun's ruining this putting that door back on the service bed because that's in the back seat and then uh, hopefully run this rig up the road and uh, get stranded and then call the neighbor to come rescue me. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of the game plan. I have a bunch of extra fuel tanks. Uh, I don't have the TBI fuel pump here, but those are pretty cheap and they're on hand at the parts store. So we'll go get a fuel pump, put it in one of my tanks, then uh, put the tank in the rig and hopefully maybe drive this thing. All right, we found a tank, and uh, there's a very specific reason I chose this tank out of all the other much nicer ones that are in there and in there. And uh, simple fact of the matter is, this one was on top of the pile, which makes it the perfect choice. And uh, also, the lock ring and sending unit are already messed up, so I don't have to worry about keeping track of that when I, uh, oh, when I put the new one in. That can just go right in the scrap bin. Uh, we'll pry it open, make sure this tank isn't rusty inside, which it shouldn't be, because I don't know why I would keep it if it was. But uh, you never know, because uh, I make questionable decisions every day. She stinks, like nasty old rotten gas, which is good. Because if it smells like bad gas, that means there's probably bad gas in it. And if it holds bad gas, it'll definitely hold good gas. So... Let's uh, take this out and see, just like all of those after school specials taught us when we were kids, what's on the outside doesn't matter, it's what's on the inside that counts. Just like videos of bikers saving puppies from rivers when they're drowning, it's, it looks rough, real rough, but it's got a heart of gold or silver. Either way, whatever that is, it's nice and clean inside, so we're going to use it because uh, it's better than what's under there with a massive hole in it. Yeah, this is uh, it's a rough body, but if you watch my videos, the other ones, you'll know I have a very nice crew cab that I brought home and set in the backyard with no plans for, so I think we'll be cab swapping this beauty eventually, but... Uh, we need to make sure we can get it running first. So that's priority number one. And then 
Priority number two will be uh, floor pans and such. So, yeah, we'll get uh, get that bad tank out and we're gonna put in the new one. All right, so we got the off-road creeper out and uh, if you don't have one of these, they are awesome and you should get one because they'll roll over all of this garbage with no problem so I can actually work on things in the driveway. Uh, and uh, Yeah, we got underneath the truck and uh, this is pretty much exactly as crusty as you would expect based on the condition of the body, which is fine though. I got a good deal on it still. Uh, it's kind of scaly, like everywhere, but since I already plan on doing a cab swap, we'll probably just have the whole frame sandblasted while the cab is off of it. But uh, really, there's no major damage. Um, that's not ideal, but that's what we're here to replace. And uh, originally, I was going to be replacing the uh, passenger side tank here. But uh, I turn the key on, and this is the pump that's buzzing, and I don't want to deal with the witchcraft that is a selector valve, because these are always a pain in the ass, and they're always stuck. So, if it's on this tank, this is the tank I'm going to replace, just to not have that headache yet. We'll worry about that later, and maybe replace the other tank later, which doesn't actually have a hole in it, so it might be fine, except for the fact that the mount is falling apart, but... We're not worried about that now. Uh, this is really dry. Let's see, as we're going through problems here, these front springs have uh, all but left the chat. It's so sagged in the front that the uh, slip yoke is basically maxed out, which is good. Uh, we got that much suspension travel before we're bottomed out, but that can be fixed. I actually have a set of leaf springs over there that'll probably end up on here. Uh, the rears are where the real badness happens though because uh, look at this garbage. First of all they're super flat. I mean there should be about a three-quarter or one inch gap between the main leaf and this leaf if they were properly arched but uh, also this side has a broken pin, broken center pin, if you'll notice by how that's all sitting, that's uh, less than stellar. And then also, somebody put curved U-bolts, no top plate, that are also half inch, uh, when it's supposed to look like this with a square U-bolt and a top plate and like actually decent. So uh, yeah, we're going to have to do something about this area here before we take it on the road because that's an axle falling out just waiting to happen so I actually saw that when I picked up the truck but I didn't realize it was that bad until I got under here so I'm gonna be checking marketplace see if I can't find a used set of springs from somebody who did like a lift kit and uh, I mean eventually we'll probably be doing like a four inch lift on this anyway but uh for now, I just need something that's not in this condition. But uh, first, we'll get to replacing the fuel tank, which uh, I'm probably not gonna film live, but basically there's four bolts here, one, two, three, four, and then there's uh, four bolts here, one, two, three, four at the front, and then uh, you got your three lines here, your power plug and then there's a ground up there somewhere that I'll have to find in this mass of wires so yeah we'll come back when we get the tank unbolted all right well we have the uh, tank brackets out and uh, normally this is where the hard part would be because normally those lines are only about four inches long just enough to cross over the frame because uh, they put the tanks on the frame before they put the body on the frame. But uh, apparently, this tank has been replaced before. So somebody already put the extended easy reach lines in for me. I did rip one of them when the tank dropped, but yeah, this is actually a little bit easier 
than trying to fight the old lines off. We're going to replace all them because they're crispy and hard and probably going to blow as soon as they have pressure anyway. But, uh, yeah, somebody did a nice thing for me and uh, made this tank easier to drop. Except for the fact that the uh, filler hoses are rock hard. Like, you can't hardly, I mean, you can crush that, but you can't hardly bend them, so... That was a real fight to get off, and this one's still being a real fight, but we'll get it because uh, I have no choice. It's supposed to drop like 25 degrees over, 25 degrees for a high from tonight to tomorrow, or from today to tomorrow, so pretty much got to do this today because I'm not going to get to it in time for the video to come out if I don't, so that's great. All right, they got this all out. And, uh, shockingly, uh, this tank is actually kind of nice-ish on the inside, which is weird, considering, uh, it looks like that. Like, it's only rusty in the spots that they're holes. That's strange. Usually, it's, like, everywhere is rusty inside, and then it rusts through, but, uh, Something must have hit this tank, is all I can think of is why it would do that. Actually, never mind, I know what happened. It's, the rubber isolator went bad on the strap, and uh, that was just metal on metal, and it wore through. Wore through all the coating, and that's why it rusted out. That's why this spot's still kind of nice, because it still has some galvanization on it. Huh. But, uh, either way, it's going in the scrap. And this one will be going in once I put the new sender in. Uh... I was going to use the one out of this tank, but those lines were all extended and stupid, and uh, I don't really like that, so we'll put one in that has the regular, length the regular length of lines in it, and then we'll be good. But uh, maybe you can see the trees dance today. I'm sick of this shit, so I'm going inside. All right, next day, weather is uh, slightly better, at least not... Uh, high wind advisory weather anymore it's colder but i can deal with colder so this is the pump we pulled out of the uh oh it's not sitting there anymore the original tank and uh this is why i don't want to use it because uh these lines are super massively extended it's just because of laziness which i don't blame them it's a lot easier with longer lines to get the tank installed but uh i don't like the way they're coupled it's like rtv with electrical tape and uh, I don't really want to drop the tank again if and when that all fails but uh, luckily my dragon horde of parts came in handy again because uh, I had a frame section over there that came under that uh, gray cab that was in another video and uh, apparently that truck was throttle body injection before it was uh, converted to diesel so we got a good throttle body injection sender pump set up in a bad tank that uh, apparently got stabbed with a forklift. So uh, we're going to pull that out and we're going to test it quick. We're just going to plug it into the truck and hook up the ground, turn the key on, see if it buzzes. And uh, if that's a good pump, we'll use that pump in our new tank. And uh, there's a very specific reason that we're using this tank. And that's uh, because it already has the straps on it. So it's easier. Because obviously that's the only way I do things. But uh, yeah, we'll get that other pump out and get it hung up there. And we'll find out together if it works or not. All right, this probably isn't the best for it. But uh, we got it just dangling by the wires. Because obviously I'm not going to put it into the tank until I know it works. So uh yeah, we'll just turn on the key, see if it makes some noise. And unfortunately, we have nothing. But, I got an idea. So the wiring is sketchy on this, but I know the pump worked. So uh, we might just switch this pump unit into that sender and see what happens because... Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I basically bought a set of axles when I paid for this truck, and the rest of it just came with. So, uh, for now, I want to put little to no money into this thing, 
until I know what's going on with it. Uh, especially because the fact that it's not a coolant, which uh, it's not in the oil, which is a good thing. But that also might be a very bad thing because we might be in it for a radiator, which is simple and easy. Or maybe it pushed out frost plugs and uh, then we're in it for a motor. And if it needs a motor, it's going to get a car big block because uh, there's a car big block out there somewhere. So uh, then it kind of invalidates the whole need for this electronic throttle body injection pump. So uh, yeah, we're going to try this used pump that I know was making noises, so I assume it's pumping and uh, put it into the good sender there, see what happens. Okay, so taking these pumps apart should be pretty easy. Uh, at least the way I did it's pretty easy, it's probably the wrong way. But uh, this black plug goes on the green, you just unplug that. You got these squish clamps that are uh, already loose for me apparently, that's a good sign, I guess. You just get in there and you with a screwdriver, you crack them open a little more without literally cracking them because uh, that's hard on the equipment. But uh, you just kind of lift them up and they squeeze open, and uh, you probably can't even see much of that. But yeah, you just get in there and they just open up. And this one is still a little too tight. But, uh, screwdriver. Come on, make me look bad. Actually, that make me look bad. Also, you can kind of just twist them. They pop apart like that. They're not like the most securest of clamps. Okay, then uh, this is meant to just not do that. It's, uh, here, I already did the other one. It's supposed to be a little cup there that just kind of pops off, but uh, this one's seized in pretty good. But, uh, Oh well, we didn't really need that to make sure the truck runs. That's not important. You just then you just kind of flex that up. The line will compress. Pump comes out. That easy. Then uh, just pop it back in the other center. Get it lined up. It kind of only goes one way. Uh, let's see here. Find your plug. Plug it back in, put the two clamps on, If well, this one tightened up while it was off, but yeah, you put those two clamps back on, you're good to go, so I'll do that uh, when I'm not being watched and when I can actually get it done, so yeah, we'll be back. Alright, we have our new used recycled different pump under there, and that did work before, let's see if it works again. Otherwise, I'm going to be at a loss. That's weird. Why is it? Shouldn't be a wiring problem. I wonder if it's just a ground issue. That's, uh, that should be working. That's not. And it's upsetting. Uh, time for some troubleshooting. All right, we did some testing and uh, thanks to some prior knowledge about these GM fuel senders, uh, I turned the key on and uh, it was pegged way past full. So uh, they do that when they don't have a ground. So we unplugged it and uh, we hooked the ground of the jump pack right to the ground wire. And then uh, if I put this test wire that's connected to the positive to the uh, gray wire here, which is this one, that works. So that just tells us that the, uh, the little ground bolt holding the plug probably wasn't tight enough and uh, that's why we weren't getting anything. So we'll find a better ground location and I uh, we'll might be in business. All right, we got this hanging one more time and I really cranked down the ground bolt this time. So now we'll try it. Ah, it seems like I do a lot of things three times on this channel. So, we'll find out real quick. I would say we still do not have good ground. Damn it. 
Yep, it's not buzzing, so uh, that's not good. I might test the plug to make sure it's actually putting voltage to it because maybe it's not calling for fuel. All right, I believe I figured out the problem. Part of it is my neighbor's out there disking up his field, so I can't really hear very well. And then the other two parts of the problem are uh, there's this little spiky washer under the ground bolt. I didn't have that installed originally. And also, there's that uh, wire clamp there that I had on the same bolt, and that might have been causing issues. But uh, now, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it because this microphone kind of sucks, but it turns on and it runs for its little two second priming burst. So we should be good to go. And uh, I'm going to do the smart. The smart dumb thing here and uh we're not going to disconnect that just in case we are going to uh try and put the tank onto the sender instead of putting the tank onto the sender and then the sender onto the truck which is stupid i know but i know i have it working now and i don't want to do all of this mess with the tank in my way so uh that's the way we're going to try and do it um but first we got to replace the uh replace those rubber lines because they're really bad and uh, apparently I was planning on swapping another tank some other time recently because uh, I found these in my hose drawer and uh, they're exactly the sizes I need we got a quarter inch for our vent 5 16 for our return and uh, 3 8 for feed so we'll hook all these up and then uh we will be back. All right, so we got the old lines cut off. We got the new ones mostly installed. Actually, all the way installed now that I think about it. So now we just gotta hook up the two lines and then uh, I'm using this transmission jack adapter, which is kind of nice because it has adjustable tilt and it also raises my floor jack like five inches. We'll just lift this into place and we'll uh, put the same four bolt or same eight bolts back in that we took out and uh, should be good to go. Hopefully I get this pump hooked up well enough that it runs this time because I'm going to be very upset if I have to drop the tank to fix it. But uh, yeah, moving right along. All right, tank's installed. <clears throat> Had some issues with the filler neck. Uh, just the vent hose was kinked off, so we got a new one of those. Uh, forgot to tighten the hose clamp, so I spilled a bit of fuel while I was put or filling it, but that's fine. Um, Jump pack's hooked up. We're going to try and start this for the first time. We're not going to run it very long because there's no coolant in it, but uh, I want to at least hear it fire before I waste a bunch of time and also three gallons of coolant filling this up, which, in all honesty, I'm probably going to end up wasting that coolant anyway because I'm guessing once I fill it up, it's going to leak back out onto the ground. Uh, probably it'll roll under there before I fill it just to make sure there's not, like, a frost plug hanging out of the block or something, but... Uh, because there's got to be a reason that coolant somewhere. It's not in the oil, so we're just going to have to fill it up and figure out where it goes. But uh, for now, uh, let's see what happens. Pump man. I must have a bad connection on the starter because... Uh, the, uh, you can't really see it. We got the jump pack hooked up, but uh, that's still turning really, really slow. So uh, we'll mess with that a bit. All right, and real fans of the channel, and people who actually know me, know when I say check connections, I just mean more jump packs. Because with enough voltage, you can have a little air gap in the wires. It'll arc. This is not going to work. This is stupid, but I got to try it because I'm lazy. Trying. Maybe we gotta pump it. It's not a carburetor, but uh, that might help.
It's smoking. That's a good sign. I should probably do a little more than just uh, crank on it, but uh, it's fine. Like I said, this motor's pretty much temporary anyway, as far as I'm concerned. All right, we killed the batteries, though. I'll have to go get the... Uh, Go get the full-on charger and hook up the big jumper. But it popped off. It did sounds, so that means we're probably getting close. Obviously, we're getting fuel if we're getting fire. So that means we did something right, or at least semi-right. So I'll be back with uh, more electricity, like always. 200 amp jump charger, that might do the trick. They always say not to put a bunch of amps right into a dead battery, but uh, hasn't killed me yet, so we're going to keep doing it. A little bit of hydrogen gas just toughens up the lungs. Okay, we'll let that sit for another minute or two. Shit, I don't even know why I'm filming this. We'll just see what it does. We're definitely low on spark or timing or all of the above because it shouldn't go pop like it is. It should be a lot more steady. But again, we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to get more juice in the battery and see if we can just really crank it over. Might take the air filter out too because that might be plugged up. That could be causing issues. So we'll let this serve for a minute and I'll take that out and then we'll try again. All right, this has had a minute to sit, and uh, I think that battery might actually be low on water because it's sitting over there just bubbling and gurgling, which isn't good, but uh, we're going to ignore that for now. And yeah, I probably should do plugs and wires given they're in uh, that condition, but I would rather hear it fire it up and run terribly and then worry about stuff like tune-up so if we can't get it to fire maybe we will do plugs and wires and a uh probably even a distributor because i think i have all those parts around but uh for now we're just gonna try and start it as is because it's trying it's smoking it's sputtering it's doing work all right let's try this again Oh, it's really close. It's trying to run. Just doesn't want to run on its own yet. I'm sure it's all fouled up and carboned with ethanol and garbage inside that throttle bunny, but we're gonna keep trying because it's close. I can feel it. You want to give it the cold preps with no oil pressure. It was just tired. It fired up actually pretty good. It's running nice. Running nice. <laughs> it actually sounds like it's firing on most of the cylinders though. That smoke just smells like condensation for the most part. Maybe it does have a head gasket on. Maybe that's why it's out of coolant. I didn't see any coolant in the oil, but that doesn't mean it's not getting into the cylinders and uh, burning. Because she's a real mosquito fogger. But hell, I've driven trucks 40,000 miles smoking that bad. I'm happy. For $1,500, I don't think I went too wrong. She's mint. There must be some coolant in it because I pulled this off and uh, it dripped a little. It was bone dry last time, so uh, maybe we won't need as much as we think. 
Maybe it's not all gonna pour out on the ground. You're not gonna see in there. I can barely see in there. But uh, for that, we're not gonna waste good brand new coolant. I mean, that that's just not how we roll on rigs like this. No, we're gonna hit it with uh, the old scrapyard special blend. This stuff has been sitting in a bucket for, I don't know, probably eight months now. Just an open bucket in the garage. Came out of a truck that I crushed because I wanted the LS motor out of it. And uh, it's still mostly good. There's just a few chunks, but we'll just pour it through a t-shirt and then uh, we'll have coolant and maybe it'll run for longer. And uh, we can take it for a yard drive at least. Uh, I thought I was going to take it on the road and be real sketchy, but uh, that's a bad idea looking at that rear spring and also the condition of all the brake lines. I know I'm going to blow a brake line, and I know that spring's going to fall out from under it. And also, for once in my life, I'm actually scared of a set of tires. Uh, I don't think those would survive much past 13 miles an hour, maybe, but we can at least drive it over and... God, this thing is always in the way. We can drive it over and park it in the lineup, though, over in Dead Alley there. But yeah, that was awesome. It, it just struggled a bit, but I'm sure that's just from sitting so long, had to blow the cobwebs out of it. We'll run it a bit and see if we can't scare the uh, cobwebs out of it. I think I just said that twice. God, I'm terrible at this. But uh, yeah, the... Uh, Oh yeah, that leads me into another point. The fact that this is so rusty and crusty underneath. But these fenders are actually fairly nice. And uh, I can tell you from experience, by being the uh, king of the shit boxes here, that is specifically from being parked on grass. Because grass, or uh, more specifically, unattended grass. Because once it grows up, you know, up past the rockers and starts tickling the edges of the truck, it holds all that humidity underneath and it just can't go anywhere. And that's why it takes out the floors and the rockers. But uh, it doesn't get the fenders as bad because you have all this airflow here. So the humidity doesn't get in there. And also obviously this is taller so the grass doesn't get that high. But it's, it'll get to the inner fenders. Like here it's pretty bad but that's mostly from underneath. There's a pocket under there, the moisture gets trapped and that's how it finds its way out. Whereas a rig like this, this one is rusted from being driven on salted roads its whole life. Fenders are still okay. Rockers are gone, but that's pretty normal. But then you lose the rear wheel wells too from salt and road grime getting kicked up on them. So that's kind of your uh, detective lesson of the day when you're shopping for garbage like this, which uh, I hope you're not. I hope none of you are stupid enough to do this, but uh, yeah, you can tell by certain rust patterns whether it's rusty from being abandoned and sitting or just rusty from mistreatment and neglect. So that's your little 45-second uh, tech tip for the day. But, uh, yeah, put this gross coolant. Oh, that chunk is actually a moth. Yeah, we're going to put this gross coolant in the motor and uh, see how well it runs after that. And if that's not enough, we're just going to top it off with water because it's not going to get cold enough to worry about offsetting the freezing temperature that badly. Apparently it wasn't as empty as I thought. It uh, didn't even take a third of that bucket. And we made a mess, but don't worry, the asphalt will keep it from soaking into the groundwater. It's not as much of an environmental disaster as it looks like. It's fine. But uh, yeah, when you are trying to strain your old dirty used coolant, it's a good idea to use your most gas-soaked t-shirt that you were using to start your other crew cab because then the coolant will wash out the gas smell and basically it's brand new again. Damn it, I went to put the cap on, dropped it inside the uh, fender, but luckily this truck comes prepared with an easy access hole. So you lose anything inside the fender, you can get it right back. <laughs> That's handy. All right, we got the front end on the ground. Time to uh, find out important things, like if the transmission and the brakes work. But uh, we're not going to check any of that. We're just going to fire it up and 
move it around, see what it does. I'm not gonna waste my time checking things. You guys should know me better than that. Ah. Okay. See well, she starts back up. Still idling high, but it started, man. We have oil pressure too, that's a good sign. We'll see if any of the other gauges work. Well, that works. The amp gauge always works on these things. I've had trucks that don't have any of the rest of this, but the amp gauge always works. Fuel gauge doesn't work, but that's whatever, I guess. Oh, those brakes are not happy. It has a backup beeper. Can you hear that? Okay, it does not have any brakes at all. Uh, we're gonna have to probably figure that out. That's a little scary. But uh, that's an easy fix. Probably just out of fluid, I'd assume it blew a line. shut it off while we check the brakes always important to have a backup beeper that works especially when your brakes don't <laughs> I've never rode a truck with a backup beeper that's kind of silly well it was a pretty short search for uh, where the brakes went probably right there I would guess where it's actively leaking brake fluid left a nice puddle on the ground let's see did it leave any other puddles Yes, that is also a new puddle that probably is brake fluid too. Let's see. Um, I don't actually know what that is. We'll ignore that puddle. But uh, yeah, the brake line that's actively driven might be a problem. So uh, I guess we won't be yard driving this today because uh, this video needs to come out tomorrow. But uh, we made another one run, and this time it wasn't just a glorified jump start video. That uh, that one kind of sucked. I thought it needed more work, but it and it does. But it'll get more work eventually. But yeah, well, uh, I guess we'll be back when I get the brake line kit because I'm gonna have to order that, and God knows how long that'll take to get here. Might as well replace it all with stainless and not even worry about those brake lines because this is gonna need a whole lot more of everything. So, you're probably going to see a bunch of this truck. It kind of sucks that we didn't get to drive it, but uh, with a couple days, well, not really. It, it took me a couple days, but it wasn't a couple days worth of work. It was probably like three, four hours tops worth of work. Uh, we got it running. These old TBI motors are gutless, but uh, they pretty much always run. They're just dirt simple. So, yeah, we got a running driving truck. We'll have to work on stopping and uh, suspensioning, but uh, just shows you that if you look hard enough and you have the right timing, there are still good deals out there. I think this was listed for 46 minutes when I picked it up, and the guy already had about 50 other messages, and he was still getting them while I was standing there wheeling and dealing with him. So you just got to watch Marketplace, and uh, I know this isn't one of those 100 grand Barrett Jackson trucks, but also... Running and driving, it's probably not a $1,500 truck either. I mean, it. sure sure, I made out pretty good because uh, these K30 crew cabs aren't getting any more common. So I would say for the first time in a while, I'm actually happy with my purchase and I don't really have any buyer's regret just yet at least. So yeah, we'll, uh, once we get parts, we'll be back working on this. So thanks for watching.